2001, on the way to speak to 10,000 people in Dallas, you had numbness mm -hmm. in your fingers, went all the way to your head. Mm -hmm. You were diagnosed with MS. I was, I was on my way to Dallas, Texas to speak at a huge woman conference, about 15,000. And right before I was going, I was experiencing symptoms. And that night when I was on the platform, right in the middle, I had an episode that I've never had in my life. And I looked out at the woman and I said, we're going to pause for station identification. I'll be right back. And I knew I had to get off. I had to be revived. And I just told the, the music team to sing until I came back. And I went to the woman's restroom and I just poured cold water on me as far as that I had no idea what was going on. And I went back out and, and I finished my address that night. And right after, they took me right to the hospital. And I had CAT scans and different things and we made them. When we returned, I got the voting that it was MS. MS the journey that would totally be changing the direction of my path. Mm -hmm. For those years, I had coped with the path of silence. Embracing it after going to the cross, it was the thing that I despised until my transformation. And now a new challenge was before me to walk humbly with my God with MS. Was I going to mumble and grumble or was I going to embrace it? And I thought I would make it a lot easier on myself if I just embraced it and walked with him on a daily basis with it. It's been nine years, and slowly but surely, I, I keep kind of going downhill just a little bit, moving real slowly now. And there was one time I said, the day that I could not stand would be the day that my speaking career would be over. And through the years, God has taught me, whether I said, whether I stand, whether I lie down, I will always proclaim him. So he's keeping me on the road. We're still going to churches and sharing that faithful story of the love and the forgiveness of God. I'm going to fast track. Okay. Because there's two things I want to do in four minutes here. Okay. One, <laughs> your greatest sorrow, February 29th, 2004, your mother, your cheerleader, your greatest encourager, your best friend. Mm -hmm passed away at 90. That was a deep valley for you. Oh, it was. But God met you there. And what came out of that pain? With mom, Christmas was always special. It was the hustle and bustle of our lives. And when I knew she was failing, I said, oh, mom, when you're gone, there'll never ever be another Christmas again. And I knew that in my heart, I just couldn't go into the party spirit. The first Christmas, I had no idea where I was going, but as God would direct my path, we ended up on the streets of Cleveland, and there I saw the homeless lane. That night, I took two into a hotel, and I gave them a bed, and I gave them breakfast. And at that moment, I knew where I was to be on Christmas Eve, that I was to be with the homeless. For those that had no one to party with to celebrate, Thus began Operation Silent Night, mm -hmm. to be with the homeless. The past day, my mom, who had gave me so many gifts in life, gave me my greatest on Christmas, mm -hmm. to be with those that had no one. So Operation Silent Night continues, and it is the only song you sing. It's the you, only you song. Sing well, it. there's other ones. I sing all my hymns of praises and adoration to myself, and when I'm alone, the Silent Night has become my signature song that wherever I tell the story, I sing the song. The story continues. Uh, you have a ministry called Waterbrooks. Here's a mission team that just came uh, to Vermont to help with the development of a very unique retreat place. Yes. Tell us about it. You see, uh, for the Christian retreat today, we will either have conference centers, okay, where people can come and basically learn the teaching. We also have Christian family retreats where families can escape and go on vacation, okay, in a nice environment. And my place, Waterbrook, is totally different than all others. We have 113 acres that we are developing into a retreat center where the silence will never ever be broken. 
where pastors can come, missionaries that are off the field, people that just want a deeper relationship with God, that they can come to the side of to be still, to know that he is God, and to hear that still small voice that man cannot drink, that man cannot give, the peace that surpasses all understanding. As the deer longs for the lung of the running waters, so my soul longs for you, mm -hmm. O oh God. So we ask for your prayers for Waterburn. We're in the beginning of stages it's being carved out in a very unique way. And I would also like to let the people out there think, you know, I'm not the celebrity. I'm a woman of faith. But all I have the desire is to come into your church any way that you can help me to be able to share the love and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Well, you've been a gift to us today. And we would be remiss if your, your new best friend didn't join us. Sure. Come on, Katie. <laughs> yeah. Katie is a hearing, a hearing dog. Yeah. She is, is uh, this your This is my your, third your hearing dog. Your third. And she came from Toronto, Canada. Excuse dog me? Days. Oakville. Oh, forgive me. Oakville. Forgive 20 me. minutes down the road. And we're very proud of that. Yes, Katie's <laughs> been with me now for six years. Yeah. What a team. The book is Silent Night, the remarkable true story that inspired the award-winning TV series, Sue Thomas, FBI. And you also make available the TV series That's at correct. your website, suethomasfbeye.com. And if, you, if you're on the highway today, you may see the car. The license plate is STFBI. And please let me add, for those in Canada, we are the only ones where you can obtain them. For some reason, Canada just hasn't been released. We are doing all the international order from all over Japan, Germany, so we are getting them. So if you live outside the grand USA and you want the DVD, just go on my website. We'll take care of you. Sue, thank you. I love Sue's encouragement that you have a gift for the world, and I hope you've been encouraged about that, as we've heard from her today.